Hi everyone, it's Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models and this is, well, <laughs> this is just a big pile of plastic at the moment but this will hopefully be my first ever scratch built spacecraft built from scratch using just the depths of my imagination um, I mean I've always done this sort of thing before with kit bashing old Star Trek kits and making ships out of Lego but this will be my first proper attempt at building a scale model using just base parts and what you see here is just packs of plastic styrene that I've bought from my local model shop and so I've just got bars, square tubes, sheets, um, half millimetre thickness and 0.75 millimetre thickness there and I've also gone and bought myself a scribing tool just to help scribe panel lines and um, bits of extra detail and flat plastic just to make it a bit more interesting and then I've just raided a few old model kits from the cupboard uh, some tanks I've got a 135th scale M1 Abrams and a Black Widow aircraft from World, from World War II and I'm just going to use bits and pieces from those just to add detail to the main structure of the ship now I've gone through various designs and sketches of what sort of ship I want to build um, it's taken me a couple of days and I've scrapped a lot of ideas but basically I want to do kind of a large capital type ship and it's going to be very basic so it's going to have just a main flat body bit of a tower inspired by aircraft carriers and then I'm just going to throw lots of bits of detail onto these flat areas and uh, have a bit of canyons down the side like Star Destroyers do basically I just want to keep this simple and throw as much stuff at it as possible and then be able to paint it all in one go and detail it up at the end using paints and spare decals so it's just another idea there with a bit of extra structure down the bottom yeah, and then back to the flat body and a few angled lines I was sweeping in towards the tower there I've actually reversed that on this sort of mock-up I've made. So I've just got the flat sheet of plastic there. Got these um, square tubes just to um, for a bit of structure in the middle. And then these bars to, for the angled lines. <laughs> and then an upside down bottle of glue for the tower. Which will be built out of plastic. But yeah, this is probably what I'm leaning towards. I mean, it's bound to change as I start building, as I find limitations in the shapes and the plastic I'm using, as well as myself, so we'll uh, see how it goes. I've also got spare photo etch from my USS Enterprise aircraft carrier, so these can just be laid against the plastic, just to build up a bit of texture. And then just a whole stack of decals from Bandai kits, random aircraft, USS Enterprise carrier again, old Star Trek Enterprise decals, so hopefully some of these will be of use. But first what I'm going to do is start gluing together the main body and uh, see what happens next. Alright so I was just about to measure up the uh, support bars in the middle, but actually like the way they protrude out the back. I think the ones on the ends could serve as good engine mounts. So I might just leave those as they are and then just cut the middle one down to length. So basically all I need to do is just measure the length of these sheets. <laughs> Probably says the length on the packet, but um just double check. Looks like exactly 12 inches. Well, that's convenient. Then I just need to cut the bar to the same length. And to cut that I've just got this little micro saw which is quite old, it's actually starting to rust a little bit. But this is just good for quickly cutting thick bits of plastic. And now I've measured five millimeter gap from the edge, just to create a bit of an overlap. And then two centimeter uh, gap from the edge of this bar 
which I've decided will be the reverse engines but uh, the main rear facing engines will have a bit more length Alright, so that's the top plate glued on. Now what I'm going to do is take the smaller square rods, no, square tubes, which are the same length as the tubes I used for the engines, and then just lay them along the top and to the side a little bit, just to start to build up the 3D structure. And I'll also repeat the same for the underside as well. Um, I didn't <laughs> expect the model to be this big, it's not even big enough to fill in the camera. Okay, so I've had a bit of a mid-project uh, change of direction. Now these things happen when you <laughs> work on the fly. So what I've decided to do is flip it around so these are no longer the main engines. These will be the main weapons sticking out the front to give it more of a um, an aggressive fang-like appearance. And I'm going to extend those with these bars so they can just slot in there. And then I've got a couple of really nice mean weapons sticking out the front. Beam lasers, probably. Not sure yet. And then just to add a bit of asymmetry, which I've always been a fan of, um, I'm going to have the tower, well, the main sort of living and working area in a structure down the side here. So I'm just going to replicate that by sticking these bars in. I'll probably just make this section out of sheet styrene. Build it up just to a slight elevation and then get another sheet and angle it up on the side and then cut it off at the edge so the um, the main hull just kind of slopes off to the side and then the, uh, the tail will protrude down this edge and I'll stick all lots of different bits of detail on that. And then for this I might cut out some sections just for a bit more uh, three-dimensional uh, sculpture. Cut out some sections and then just sort of have them go down to the main sheet underneath as some sort of like hangar bays or some sort of different areas of equipment just to make it look, look a bit more interesting. And the reason I've gone for this sort of approach is that um, I want to make use of a lot of decals, markings and paintwork and panel lines and that was going to be quite difficult with a flat surface with all sorts of detail on it. So I want a nice kind of raised sideward facing platform. Now I'm just using the scribing tool to scribe some panel lines into the uh, side of the tower. Oh it's not really a tower anymore, side of the superstructure. You can see here, they're not too deep, but uh, they should catch a wash quite nicely. Okay, so I've got my two pieces of card cut out for the sloped section. And I've decided to leave just a, a full width gap in the middle. So the engines will be on the back of this side and the front of the ship will be on the front of that side. And I'm going to angle them up to about here. So to help with that I've just got one of these strips and I'm just going to glue it along the side there so the pieces of card have got something to sit against. So here I've taken some measurements of the front face of the ship so that all of that needs to be covered and then take into account the angle of the sloping piece and I've just measured that just using a ruler. So now I just need to cut out uh, this shape and then duplicate it and reverse for the back section. Alright, so I'm just about to glue down the sloped sections and I've made some front and back plates to cover the gaps at the front and 
the exposed section in the middle for each side of those. And for the actual plates themselves, I've just made some 3D detail by measuring up and cutting out these shapes and then just gluing a section of card on the back, just a bit of scrap. And for the back plate, I was just going to cut out this square and do the same as I did for the front, but as I was pushing it down, one side just remained stuck to the plastic and it created this nice little slope. So I thought I'd keep that and then just glue some strips to support it. So now I've just got a nice kind of sloping section that goes in towards the structure. So that was just a nice little different piece of detail. And so now I've just got to glue all of these together and I'll have the bulk of the ship pretty much done. Right, so that's the main construction complete. I've got it all closed off and now it's ready for detailing. Now there's no real plan, I'm just going to make it up as I go along, just using all of my tank and aircraft bits. Um, I'm still going to stick the super laser weapon thingies out the front and some engines on the back down there. But apart from that, it's just uh, see how it goes really. Alright, so here's how it's looking after all of the detail has been added. And as you can see, there's just a lot of tank parts and plates just slapped on there. Um, there are a couple of areas that I'm quite pleased with, just from a construction point of view. This little arrangement here, just to cover up the gap in this square tubing, was just made by using two different sizes of plastic rod, and then just stacked up in this kind of a rock formation type of arrangement. So this, I think that looks pretty cool. Now I've got the two main weapons there, just with a few tank parts sticking out the front. And then some really obvious tank parts and guns and antenna just sticking out the front there for a vast array of sensors or weapons. I haven't quite decided what each thing does yet, but um, in the middle I've got um, the uh, probably the biggest sub-assembly. So this was just made by using a section of square tube and then built up details. So we've got halves of a gun breech. Uh, some return roller wheels and some landing legs from the A-Wing, I think it was, from Bandai Kit. And another sub-assembly here. This is basically the base of the M1 Abrams gun. So it's on a slant and then I just built up some detail on the top. And so this could be some sort of planetary bombardment weapon where the ship would park up and then just fire all sorts of hell down on people below. But then again, I, that could easily be a sensor or some sort of other, have some sort of other function, so it doesn't necessarily need to be a weapon of mass destruction. And just uh, only used a few photo witch pieces in the end just to cover up these round reverse engines at the front and the same at the back. These were just um, refueling racks from the Enterprise carrier, I think. And I think the my favourite part of the build is the bridge tower assembly here, which was made completely by accident. Um, I covered up a gap in the the hull with this piece here, so I had a little bit jutting out the top. And then I used, I think this was from an A-wing landing gear, or Y might have been the front of the Y-wing landing gear actually. I just cut off the struts and then started wrapping around this grill from the Abrams. And what I started doing was glued it to that face and then cut off so I could measure the where to cut it off and then I glued it to that face at the top and then I was going to cut it off at the end and then wrap it around the back. But I liked the look of it sticking out the top so much that I just kept it. And I actually think it adds quite a lot of character. Even though it's such a small little construction, it really brought a bit of personality to the ship. It's kind of like a, um, a windswept head. Or even a, a fist that's about to punch someone in the face. So I, <laughs> I quite like that that little part. But because it's so small, you could imagine that being quite a large structure. So that really scales up the ship quite a lot, having that there. So um, there was that un unintended consequence. I did want the bridge to be a little bit bigger. But I liked that so much that I thought that would be cool as the bridge. And then along the sides, just small little bits and pieces. I've got more of that grill just jutting out the side there just some sort of sensor platform and all sorts of vents and stuff from the abrams 
this was a uh, all these little bits were from a World War One tank, and there was a lot of them, so <laughs> I used them all just to give a bit of texture to the top there, and just a rare moment of uniformity, where a lot of this is quite random singular pieces, whereas I've got a few few places where there's quite a lot of repeat patterns. And there's a minor sub-assembly at the back here. I'm not quite sure what this is yet. It might might be some sort of wormhole generator for faster than light travel or some sort of sensor platform or generator. And there's the main engine at the back. It's quite small. Um, so there's none of those large cone type engines that you see on the back of Star Destroyers and things like that. It's quite a modest little engine at the back. And that was just the Black Widow. Uh, engine, one of the radial engines, and then just covered up with some sections, fenders I think from the Abrams, and another little Fredowich piece in there, and some armoured plates for the top. I kind of uh, had the idea that this ship has um, has been through a lot of refurbishments and refits and upgrades over its lifetime, so it's probably a few decades old, this ship. And a lot of all this extra detail is just um, all the life, all the upgrades it's had during its lifetime. So that's why it's looking a bit hodgepodge. It's a battered old warhorse. And the bottom, I haven't ignored that. So just a few simple plates and a few bits jutting out the bottom. And yeah, the most interesting thing is just using these rods to uh, bent them and then stuck them down in some sort of circuit type of construction. And just anchored them with these little nibs from a tank. I wanted to keep the bottom quite flat just because it was a lot easier to place on the desk when I was building it up. I didn't want too many pieces sticking out the bottom to make it easier for display. And I think I will need to stick this on a stand at some point. I'll probably just drill a hole in the middle and use one of those round two universal dome bases. But the more I built it up, the more fragile it was getting, the more difficult it was to manoeuvre and adding parts, so I think I'm pretty much done with it, um, construction-wise. And the last detail is along this, in this wedge section here. I've just got a couple of vents and some tracks for a landing bay. So these could be like hangar door shutters there. And I'll add some decals or paint work to further indicate that this is a landing bay. And just a few more details along the port trench. There, so, um, yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot of parts that are quite obviously from tanks or aircraft, but, you know, it's, it's just the pieces that I had, so I'm not too bothered by that. Now, hopefully the paint will help to hide some of that, but um, some of them will still be obviously be tank parts and I'm not going to pretend that they aren't. But overall I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. It's obviously quite different than what I had originally planned but that's just the way it goes when you're making it up as you go along. And I'm quite happy that some parts just ended up by accident which is was quite fun. And yeah so the next step will be to give it a primer coat of light grey using Tamiya's extra, no Tamiya's surface primer. I'll spray that out in the garage, and so that'll just give a uniform coat over everything, and then I can start thinking about what colours I want to paint it. So that's the primer layer down, and as you can see, it's already starting to look a lot more uniform and integrated, helping to hide a lot of those uh, model pieces, so it's starting to look pretty good. And so for the first layer of paint, I'm going to apply a layer of pre-shading, just using Vallejo's model layer black. And I'll just uh, coat the entire model in black. Now with the black pre-shading layer applied, I need to make a decision on what sort of grey I want to use. And I've got a nice fine selection of Vallejo greys that I've collected over the years. Starting with uh, whoops, white grey and then ending at black grey and all the other greys in between. I mean there's, a lot, there's loads of other greys you can get but these are just the ones I've got on hand. And I think I'm going to go for a sort of a dark grey theme, which will be this anthracite grey. 
71052. I think it has a different name now. I could be wrong. But, um, yeah, so I'll apply that, and then if I don't like the look, then I might apply some lighter greys. But I want to start going from dark to light, because that'll help with the pre-shading as well. Then if I went from light to dark. So I'm just kind of making a, making a decision as I go along. If I do like the anthracite grey, I'll just stick with that. Because I also need to think about colour highlights and the decals I'm going to apply so they don't clash with too dark or too light colours. So there's all sorts of things I need to think about before finalising the, the main colour. But for now I'm just going to start applying the dark grey and then we'll see how it looks. So that's the dark grey coat gone down and it's looking pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do is seal it all in with a clear coat of Tamiya's TS13 clear and uh, then start on detail paint. Alright so for the panel colours I've decided to go for something a little bit different and sort of grungy and industrial. This lovely rust colour from Vallejo 71080. Now with a cotton bud, with a bit of acrylic thinner, I'm just going to start wiping away some of these panels just to indicate a bit of weathering and chipping. And so this is why I put on the gloss coat down before doing these patterns, so when I start wiping away the acrylic it won't affect the base grey underneath. Now for a bit of manual brushing, I'm going to use the same rust colour to paint all of these little um, wedges along the top. So now for a little trick that I did with my um, larger USS Enterprise, although very lightly, is to get a piece of card or masking tape that I did on the Enterprise, but in this case I'm just going to use a bit of card and some very thinned down black, and then just spray along the edge to create just some very light panel lines. And it's just a quick and easy way to get some detail and some you know, definition without having to mask up complicated patterns. And so the reason it's thinned down black is so that it doesn't create too much of a harsh line. And so it just kind of blends in with the background a little bit. So here you can see the uh, 
panel shading applied and I've put a couple of strips in for the landing bay and I really like how the bottom has turned out with the panel shading it's got a really nice Babylon 5 kind of texture to it which I think has turned out really well so I'm going to take a pause in the painting for now and start applying the decals mainly just to help to inform me about what to paint next because I don't want to have any clashing colours or paint somewhere that could have been used for a, as a space for a decal instead so I'm going to go through all my sheets of decals and start picking out some nice looking patterns These decals I'm putting on at the moment are from that huge 132nd scale Starfighter F104. It, um, I still haven't built yet, but I'm using some of the markings that I won't be using for that particular kit. So these are quite nice spares to use. Alright, so all the decals have been applied, and as you can see I've started laying down the thins down black panel shading over the top of the decals just to help them blend in a bit and make them look a bit less fresh. And I kind of looking back, I kind of wish I had recorded that step, but as of these builds go, once I stuck the decals down, I just thought I'd do a little bit of light panel shading just to help the decals blend in. And as with these sort of kits, as you kind of making it up as you go along. You kind of just start freestyling a bit so while I had the paint and the brush I also started doing a bit of weathering and a bit of scuffing here and there so it kind of looks like I've progressed quite a lot since the last update but I haven't really it was basically just the decals and then one session with the airbrush and I just started spraying and just kind of got ahead of myself really a bit so I had to remind myself that I am recording a video and take a break and so this is the progress so far and so that big marking there is just the same from the Starfighter 09 registry and just some warning stripes strips from the Starfighter as well and then from the Abrams USS Enterprise some nice big panel blocks just to break up the the, um, the painting a bit and I've also got the same registry along the side and the Insignia and some decals from Darth Vader's chest piece, which I ended up painting, so I had those spare. And there's some hints at lights, some other blocks of light grey, could be navigation beacons or something like that. And of course, along the bottom, just before I stuck the decals down, I thought it was looking a bit flat, so. I went ahead and painted another rust panel there and then just added some warning strips and some more decals from the Enterprise and you can see here I've just added some patches of black just to indicate some sort of vent or weathering along there along with doing all the panel shading and for the back which is quite difficult because it can't really fit in the shot but it's just quite simple. It was just the registry number and then some markings for the back of the engine and the rest of the detail will just make up will just be made up with paint. There. And it's just a few on the front, nothing really that complex. Just a couple more from the Enterprise. Some random shapes and patterns and then more Darth Vader lights. I um, also started painting the reverse and back engines, sublight thrusters if you will. I'll finish those off later on. And so the next step is just to finish off the detail paint. And then I think we're getting pretty close to completion. Alright, so the uh, detail paint has been completed. 
And in the interest of speeding this video up a little bit, I'm just going to show off all of that detail at the end. But for the next step, I'm going to be applying a little bit of dry brushing, and this will add weathering to the kit and also help to bring out a lot of this detail that's been hidden in the shadows and all of the other parts that are painted the same as the hull colour. So I try to bring out some edges, some edge definition, especially along these large pieces and also all the little pieces down the sides. And so for the colour for that, I want to go for a sort of a, a lighter rusty colour. So I'm just going to combine the rust that I've used before in this Vallejo Dark Ghost Grey. And so I've just got to mix those up one to one. To start off with. So that's just four drops each. And mix it up a bit. And you don't need a lot of paint for dry brushing. The idea is to get the majority of the paint off the brush, so you're just left with traces of it. So I'm just going to wipe it on the paper towel. Because I don't want to be painting the kit, I just want to uh, get the edges to pick up, to scrape off the little bits of paint on the brush. And just when you think you've got it all off, do a bit more. So you can see I'm kind of dry brushing the paper towel here, bringing out all that detail. Right, and then just start brushing. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't really start, if it doesn't really look like you're doing much, because you can always add more later. It's a lot better to do that than put too much on on the first go. Sometimes this technique can be quite hard on the brush, especially a kit like this which has got lots of detail that it's, the brush is bashing up against. It can quite cause the brush to fray and distort a lot. So that's why I use just really cheap flat brushes for this. Something that I'm not too bothered about messing up. And with the dry brushing applied, I'm going to do a final coat of very thinned down Vallejo Black Grey. Now what I'm doing here is I've just got a little bit of airbrush thinner on this uh, smooth cloth. I'm just gently wiping away the, um, the dark grey top coat and some of the other panel shading from the decals just very lightly and very carefully just to uh, create a little bit of random sort of weathering and chipping effect so like all of these markings I've had years of space dust and debris and particles covered up and then just chip, gradually chipped away by other space debris it's just kind of a multi-layered weathering effect but I don't want to go too far and take too much off so I think that's probably about, about enough for that now just before I put on the final clear coat I'm just going to add some window lights just using basic white paint to get this bit of dust off the brush
And now finally for the final step is to add a flat coat using Vallejo's satin varnish, which may seem a bit strange because I've also got matte varnish. But as I've mentioned in another video, I just find the satin works a lot better for my setup. I don't know if it's just to do with my airbrush or the sort of environment I'm in, but I just find it goes through, through the airbrush a lot easier and just gives a really nice flat coat, so that's what I end up using. And there it is, all complete. And as I've mentioned before, I have had quite a lot of fun building this up. I've learnt quite a bit about building up styrene from scratch into your own structures. And uh, different methods for building up shapes and 3D elements. So hopefully I'll be using those skills on further scratchboard projects in the future. And then just uh, sticking all the tank and aircraft parts everywhere was, yeah, it was just really nice to have that artistic freedom to decide where bits go and where bits don't go. Some of them have worked out um, quite well, and some of them, you know, could have been slightly improved. Like, um, especially the front plate was not quite lined up correctly, so there's a lot of slight angle on it, so some of these uh, sensors and rods sticking at the front are on slightly wonky angles, but overall it's uh, it's not too distracting. So, And it is just a kit bash, really. Um, I haven't really put uh, too much, I haven't been too precious with with the build and the paint. It's, um, I certainly wanted it to look good, but I uh, probably haven't spent as much time and effort as I would have on more more sort of um, established builds, if that, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Not to degrade my own work or anything, but yeah, overall I'm quite happy with how it's come out. I um, quite like the paint scheme. It's uh, quite dull and weathered, just what I was going for. It's quite industrial and grungy, and a lot of people have mentioned as I've been posting photos that it reminds them of um, ships from Alien, or the Aliens universe, which I can I definitely agree with. Even though that wasn't really the look I was going for, but it's quite a happy coincidence there. And also, if you've been following my Instagram, I put up a photo and a naming contest, because um, while I was talking with um, Easy Company Gaming and Collectibles, we come up with a class name for the ship, so officially it's a 10k class destroyer. 10k being a reference to my recent 10,000 subscriber special, and but I still needed a name a name for the individual ship, so I put up, you know, put up the question on it uh, on Instagram and got you guys to come up with a nice name that I could choose, and I finally went for Retribution, which I believe was from Crazy for Coldplay. So cheers for that suggestion, and that's what I'll be officially naming it, and of course I'll be posting up photos. Of the full build and I'll be doing some photoshops of it with some spacey backgrounds on my Facebook and Instagram so to be sure to check out those I'll put the links in the description and as always if you've got any questions or comments about the video itself or any of the building techniques I've used or if you'd like any advice or you can offer any criticisms then please leave a comment in the fields below and I uh, look forward to reading them and so I hope you've enjoyed watching that build and uh, I hope to see you again next time. So until then, thanks for watching and take care.